All right, it's Damien from Marketing Food Online, and in this video, I'm gonna cover five of my subscriber questions here on Marketing Food Online. And if you've got a question, definitely let me know down below so we can jump into it, and let's answer these five right now. All right, so let's hop into these five questions. And as always, welcome to Marketing Food Online. My name is Damien, and I am a food entrepreneur. Me and my wife have owned and operated food businesses for the past 12 years. And right now, we are 100% online with six e-commerce food businesses. Um, and we have our fantastic YouTube channel with all of our wonderful subscribers. So we give you information and tips and experience on how to start your own food business or food truck or pretty much any type of food business you can imagine. So let's dive into five questions. As always, thank you guys for asking and I love to answer these questions. We're gonna try to do one video every week and recap five questions. So please do keep asking. I'll get to your question as soon as I possibly can. So the first one I've actually got up is from Tristan Luna. And then I apologize in advance if I mistake, mistake your pronounce your name. Um, is uh, is this applicable to vitamin gummies as well? Actually, this question was a video Tristan had watched how to ship chocolate during the summertime. There was a video I put together about uh, using ice packs and items that could potentially melt. That is a great question, Tristan, because we actually have a line of candies that are obviously gummy bears and candies of that sort, very similar to the consistency of vitamin gummies. And yes, this could work to that as well. If you are producing any type of candy that's a gummy substance, or even if you're selling vitamin gummies, um, you want to make sure that you keep the temperature during summertime. It gets ridiculously hot in transit when you ship a product. Um, and it, that's definitely a big, big problem with gummies. If it's not kept at a certain temperature, that type of a candy can melt and solidify together and become one big glob, uh, which I actually have, I, I have experienced that. That's the reason why I know. When I first started, I didn't realize that, but ice packs are definitely needed. Any type of candy that could potentially melt, like a gummy or lollipops or any of that, anything of that sort, brittle candies as well, or even truffles, chocolate truffles, you wanna make sure you have an ice pack during the summertime. So yes, Tristan, definitely keep, keep that in mind as you ship your gummy products. You need to make sure that the temperature is well, well kept uh, at a good, cool temperature in transit. So now the next one I have up is from Kathy Chambers. Uh, this question is, can you use saran wrap? Uh, when you're looking to ship a pie, I actually did a video on how to ship a pie and we use a heat sealing shrink wrap. Um, that is the best way to secure it. Can you use saran wrap? No, and here's why. Saran wrap will not adhere to the overall package that the pie is in. So the pie pan that you have in it, if you wrap the saran wrap around that and then ship it um, through transit as it moves around and gets bumped, the saran wrap will come off, the pie will get damaged and will not arrive securely. So I highly recommend you definitely get the equipment. Actually in that video, I have some links to products that I use in the video. So it actually will, will give you the heat gun, the shrink wrap itself, all of the packaging that you need to do it right. Uh, so definitely stay away from saran wrap. It, it, and saran wrap is great if you're taking it in your car and you're going to your neighbor's house, but if you're shipping a product, you wanna make sure it's completely secure so it doesn't bounce around during transit. All right, so number three, this is actually comes from Spicy World Food and Travel. Thank you so much for that question. Uh, this was in regards to a video I did about um, getting equipment for your food truck. And will it work now in 2020? Yes. This does not have a time limit on it. I've actually, this is from the WebsterRantStore.com, that website that actually gives you credit for giving reviews for products. And I actually demonstrate how you can spend probably anywhere from like just $800 to $1,000 and you can get around $10,000 or so worth of product. I think eight or 10 grand worth of product actually. Um, it's a fantastic video. It's, it can be used for anybody that's wanting to open a food business on a budget. Uh, but you definitely do these reviews that give you a credit and basically you purchase equipment. So spicy world food, yes, thank you for asking. That is something that they still do. And yes, you can do it. There's no time limit on it, as I mentioned. I've actually bought from Webster on, uh, we've probably been eight, eight or nine years, I think now. We've been buying from them. So we still do, we still do the food reviews and uh, it helps us buy even equipment for our own facility <laughs> that we use in right now. So let's see, that's uh, one, two, three. We got two more questions. And let's dive into the next one. So we have one of the things here we have about the packaging <clears throat> is in regards to our cake. All right, actually, no, not in regards to the cake. I was looking at a different question. This is a great question. As a matter of fact, 
Um, and I can speak on this on my own personal experience as well. This is from Pal TV. Uh, thank you for the informational video. Just a quick question. If you file for a provisional or utility patent, is it not true that you must disclose the recipe and the process which then can become public knowledge? Just needed some clarification. Thank you. Okay. So let me explain to you how this works. This was based on a video I did, how to legally protect your recipe. Now, in the real world, recipes are not protected by any type of patent or uh, provisional patent or anything of that sort, or even copyright. Uh, recipes are not. Processes are different. And I know this because I actually have a provisional uh, patent on a process. There's a product that we make. This particular product that we make, there is only two ways to make it, okay? Literally, the process to make it is only two. And those are the two that I covered in the provisional patent. I've actually, I actually hold several U.S. patents myself, complete utility patents that took several years to do. Uh, but you can actually Google that too; uh, they'll cut, they'll pop up. But those patents are utility patents; they're not food related. So I've been in, I've been in uh, correspondence with the USPTO office for quite some time. Um, and before I even did this food, uh, food provisional patent. I actually spoke to a representative at the USPTO so he could explain to me more specific. He told me that recipes are not part of it. It is the process to make it uh, is something that you could potentially get. Now, that doesn't mean you can get a provisional patent. Not every provisional patent is, is uh, approved and given to the one applying for it. Um, so definitely something you want to think about. The recipe is not important when you're applying for the process to make something. And I know that may sound weird, but the recipe is a recipe. So as an example, and I'm not trying to sound, sound silly about it, but the, the recipe itself is going to give measurements and uh, measurements of food ingredients and then how to combine them. So when I filled out the application, what was requested and what they asked me to put down was what is the process to make it? I didn't give them a recipe, did not, okay? I gave them the process it was to create the finalized product. So keep that in mind. Most importantly, a lot of food entrepreneurs have that challenge and have a fear about this is that they think that creating a food product is super unique and that no one else can, can compete with it or create something and they're going to steal it. Well, that's kind of true and it's kind of not. At the end of the day, when you create a food product and you put the ingredient list, you're only putting the ingredients. You're not putting measurements, you're not putting recipes, you're not putting the process. So if you want to create a food product, please, please don't be hesitant to do it because you think that someone will steal it. To be truthful, under the sun, like the, there's really, there's old saying, nothing new under the sun. There's really nothing new to the food world, but there's a lot of new ways to incorporate ingredients that create something that may seem new. But there really is nothing new, okay? Plant-based products and these types of things that come out, they, they seem like they're revolutionizing the world. Well, plant plant-based foods in general have been around forever. It's just a matter of how are you combining them and creating a finalized product. There's nothing new about that, okay? So if you're looking to get a, a provisional patent, not a utility patent, but a provisional patent on your process, yes, you should do that. And they're not going to request the recipe. They did not whenever I filled out mine and I have my provisional, uh, which actually got approved. So uh, for that particular product, yeah, it went through fine. So I hope that answers your question. Uh, just keep that in mind. Don't spend, don't get hung up too much on the idea that someone's going to steal something because unless they have the actual measurements, the actual recipe, the process to make it, everything involved, it's not something that can be basically stolen because it's already out there. So. One more question I've got for you really quick. Let's take a look. Um, so this one comes from, and again, I apologize if I said that on Lurkista, Lurkista uh, Quita. Um, she says, uh, it says here, hello, is the reviews for, this is another one actually about Webstrong. It's a great one. Uh, the reviews for food and beverages allowed also. And yes, they are. Uh, to my knowledge, they are. Every product within Webstaurant store can actually be uh, reviewed and you can actually get that credit for it. Um, there's a little bit of misunderstanding. I've had some questions about the three reviews, the top three reviews. Here's how it works. If you buy a blue spoon and you give the three reviews, a written, a photograph, and a video, those are the three that they can accept from your purchase of the blue spoon. And this is an example, of course. <clears throat> they don't limit it to just three reviews for the entire thing. As I've come across products that have over 50 reviews of the exact same product. You, you can't rebuy the blue spoon and leave three more reviews. That's not how it works. Simply your first three reviews of that single product is all that you can submit. Okay? And then that's how you get your $16 credit, uh, which can be used towards anything else. So I hope that helps you. Yes, the food and beverage, definitely take a look at that. 
you should be able to submit that with absolutely no problem. So those are our top five questions for this week. I appreciate you watching the video. Please do leave me questions as always. I will hop into it as soon as I possibly can. And I will see you guys on our next video. Thanks for watching Marketing Food Online. And if you are looking to create your own food truck, start a home-based food business under the Cottage Food Law, franchise a food operation, start a packaged food business, private label your own food product, sell on Amazon, get your own online store or sell food online. Remember to subscribe and check out these videos for more resources. Take care.